Before this video begins, I'd just like to give an extra special thank you to my patron, the Beast Boss. Links to join the Patreon can be found in the description down below. The deleted scenes for Doctor Who Season 1 and the 60th Anniversary Specials have recently been released on Doctor Who Day. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining them. Okay, so as part of the celebrations for Doctor Who Day on the 23rd of November, among some other announcements, we got the deleted scenes for Doctor Who Season 1 and the 60th Anniversary Specials. I'm possibly going to be talking about some of the other announcements we got during Doctor Who Day in a video later this week or this weekend, but this video is just going to be about those deleted scenes we got, which I think it's nice that we did get some deleted scenes for Doctor Who Day. It was a nice little thing for them to do as part of the celebrations for the day. But it is a bit of a shame that these deleted scenes weren't part of the the physical releases for Doc 2 Season 1 and included in the box set as part of the bonus features for the season, especially considering pretty much all of the stuff on the physical releases of Doc 2 Season 1 is all available on YouTube or on BBC iPlayer, besides I think some director breakdowns for certain scenes or certain episodes. I think that's the only thing that was exclusive to the physical releases themselves. Alongside the release of the deleted scenes itself, we did also get a press release which explains a lot of the deleted scenes and the reasons they were cut. And the start of that press release reads, To celebrate 61 years of Doctor Who, we're bringing you a little bit extra from the latest era of the series. Over on the official Doctor Who YouTube channel, you can watch deleted scenes from Season 1 and the third 60th anniversary special, The Giggle. So yeah, the only deleted scenes we've got from the 60th anniversary specials are from The Giggle. There's not any from The Star Beast or Wild Blue Yonder. And it goes on to say, There are many reasons why not everything in a script makes it into the final broadcast episode. Runtime, pacing, or even just a change in artistic direction. And as an extra treat, each deleted scene comes with a note from showrunner Russell T. Davis, explaining the decision not to include it in the final call. So without further ado, let's get started with the giggle. So the first deleted scene for the giggle shows the Doctor and Donna arriving at the new Unit HQ, with Donna talking to Kate Stewart to make sure her family is protected. I want my whole family safe. My daughter and my husband and my mum. I think this was a very nice scene and it is a shame that it got cut because, in my opinion, Donna doesn't have a whole lot to do in the giggle. Obviously the Star Beast is very focused around her family and she has a lot more to do in that. She also has quite a lot to do in Wild Blue Yonder with it just being her and the Doctor. But I do feel like Donna gets a little bit sidelined in the giggle. So it would have been nice to have this little moment for her character in this episode. And I can imagine a lot of people watching The Giggle would also be kind of wondering what is happening to Donna's family during that episode. So this would have kind of explained that a little bit as well. But Russell stated that this got cut because it spoils the sweeping entrance of the new Unit HQ to stop and have a chat. And they also cut it so that they could get to Mel faster. So I do kind of understand why they wanted to cut it from Russell saying that. It does make sense. But like I said, it would have been nice to have some more moments with Donna in this episode. So the next deleted scene from The Giggle is more shots of the Doctor and Donna going between the different doors in Toymaker's realm, in the Toymaker's domain, and Russell said that this was cut for time, which to me makes a lot of sense. I mean, obviously they don't have the music in these deleted scenes, but when I first watched this deleted scene, I could definitely understand why it got cut, because it feels very repetitive and quite slow and boring, but obviously like I said, that could just be because we don't have the final music or anything like that in it, but I can understand why they cut this, because it is just the Doctor and Donna going through even more doors in the Toymaker's domain, which I think we got enough of in the episode itself. Okay, so so that's it for the deleted scenes for the 60th anniversary specials. Now we get on to the deleted scenes for Doc 2 Season 1, starting with Space Babies. So the first deleted scene from Space Babies that we get is Ruby talking with the Space Babies, telling them about how she was abandoned as a baby, just like them, and kind of connecting with them in that uh, same shared experience that they have. My poor old mum left me on a church doorstep. Which I think was a really nice moment, and it's a nice performance from Millie Gibson in that episode, in that moment. But I can kind of see why this is cut, because obviously we already have the nice moment between the Doctor and the Space Babies as well, which is very similar to this, and I think happens at basically the same time. And although this moment allows us to have more of some backstory for Ruby Sunday's character, we do already have that moment early on in the episode when they first land where we kind of see the flashback to that moment in the church on Ruby Road between Ruby and the Doctor. So we kind of already have a bit of this in the episode already, so I can kind of understand why that was cut. And Russell stated that this scene was cut for time, but stated that it's a shame because Millie was wonderful in this scene, which I have to agree with, but I can't understand why this was cut personally. The next deleted scene from Space Babies is another moment of the Doctor and Ruby wandering around the kind of underneath part of the space station where the bogeyman lives. With Russell saying that this scene was cut so that they could get to the bogeyman a bit faster and I can understand that because it doesn't necessarily feel necessary to have this moment but it is a nice scene that kind of adds to kind of
kind of the tension of them looking for the bogeyman and stuff like that. And it also has a line in it where the Doctor says, into the belly of the beast, which I think would have been great for for one of the trailers if they did keep this in. And I wouldn't have been surprised if this scene did make it into the final court, if that line also made it into the trailer as well. Because it feels like a very trailer written line, in my opinion. Into the belly of the beast. But I can understand why this was cut. The next deleted scene from Space Babies is the Doctor kind of checking on the bogeyman after he saves him from being sucked out of the airlock. Are you all right? <laughs> Which is a nice moment between the Doctor and the Bogeyman, as obviously he wants to save the Bogeyman because he's the only one of his kind, similar to the Doctor. But we kind of already get a sense for that with the Doctor wanting to save the Bogeyman in the first place, so I can kind of understand why this was cut. And a version of this shot did make it into the final episode anyway, because as Russell T. Davis says, it wasn't needed, though a wide shot of this scene plays on the screens behind Jocelyn, so it kind of still made it into the episode in some form, but it's a bit harder to spot in the actual episode itself. Okay, so now we move on to the Devil's Chord, with the first very short deleted scene being the Doctor saying that someone has stolen music. Someone has stolen music! Now at first I did think it was a bit weird that this scene was cut from the episode because of how short it was, so it can't have really been cut for time. But Russell T Davis's note makes it make a lot more sense, as he says, It felt a bit psychic of the Doctor, how does he know it was stolen? Which I think does make sense, because by this point in the story, it would be a bit weird if the Doctor already understands that someone has stolen music, although I don't think it's too much of a leap for him to kind of think that's what's happened, but I can understand why Russell wanted to cut it for that, and I don't think it affects the story in a negative way with this line being cut. The next deleted scene from The Devil's Call we get is of Maestro on the rooftop after appearing from the piano. And who was that? Where she uses her cosmic tuning fork to track the location of the Doctor and Ruby after they've just ran away. With Russell T Davis noting that this was cut for time and that they needed to just get on with it, which I can understand, but it was a nice moment to have. But I think the episode still works very good without this moment in there. And we obviously already have Maestro using the tuning fork to kind of try and track the Doctor and Ruby later on in the episode as well. So I think this still works. The next deleted scene from The Devil's Chord is the Doctor and Ruby Sunday running back up the stairs to the rooftop after they've just returned music to the world, with Russell noting that this was cut because it explains what's about to happen when they can just show what happens instead, which does make sense. But I believe this is the moment that was cut that we'd heard about before this point where it kind of explains kind of why that musical number at the end of the episode happens and why there's the whole piano sequence when they're running across Abbey Road to get back to the TARDIS, because this explains that everything's going to be a bit crazy for about 10 minutes. Time is going to go crazy for 10 minutes. Similar to everything being left in a state of play at the end of the giggle, allowing the Doctor to split the TARDIS into two with that big hammer that kind of appears out of nowhere. So I think if they had left this in, it would mean that people would have had less of an issue with all that random stuff happening at the end of the episode. But I can also understand why Russell wanted to cut this. And the final deleted scene from The Devil's Chord is just after this moment as well, where we see everybody rediscovering music and singing and playing instruments, which I think is a nice moment, but like Russell says, it was a nice idea, but not really me. Needed. Okay, so now we get onto the first deleted scene from 73 Yards, where we get kind of an extended sequence or an additional sequence of Ruby being left on her own by the TARDIS with the woman behind her. With Russell stating, it's already a long, slow opening, get on with it. Which definitely makes sense, but I think it would have been nice to kind of stay in this moment of Ruby being on her own for a little bit longer, because we do kind of move on from it very quickly and skip time quite a bit, not long after this sequence, but I can understand why he decided to get rid of this one. The next deleted scene from 73 Yards is the the morning after Ruby defeats Roger Abguilliam using the woman, with Ruby running to the window to see if the woman has disappeared because she thinks that's what the woman was there for. And obviously just before this point we did have Ruby asking her while she was stood at the same window the night before if that's why the woman was there in the first place and if she can leave her alone now, which Russell notes at the end of this uh, segment on the website as well. So now we get on to the finale with The Legend of Ruby Sunday. The only deleted scene from this part of the finale is an alternate sequence of Harriet Arbinger heralding the return of Sutek. I can't tell what the exact differences with this is, it's not too different from the episode itself, but Russell notes that it's all tightened, sharpened and pulled up, which probably makes sense because I think, from what I remember, the scene that made it into the final episode itself was better than this one, but like I said, I can't tell what all the differences are between this version and the final version that actually made it to air. And finally we get on to the deleted scenes from Empire of Death, starting with the Doctor, Ruby and Mel arriving in 2046, but this time we see the remembered TARDIS fade away after they've landed there and after it's 
fulfilled its purpose, which is something I think we'd heard was meant to be in the episode before this article as well. With Russell noting, we lost this because I didn't want the remembered TARDIS to die. I like the thought of it still out there somewhere, which is probably kind of a reference to Tales of the TARDIS. He probably deleted that moment so that we could have a reason for Tales of the TARDIS to exist, and he probably deleted it after thinking of that, or maybe he thought of that after deleting it. And the final deleted scene from Empire of Death is a moment that I think we'd also heard about before this point, where we see the Doctor giving his past self the whistle that he uses to summon the TARDIS at the end of this episode, as well as playing There's Always a Twist at the End on the jukebox. With Russell noting, this seemed terribly complicated, but watching it again now, it's great. Maybe we shouldn't have cut it. Though I don't think anyone wondered where he got his whistle from. I've seen a lot of people kind of wondering why this was deleted and kind of thinking that it should have been in the episode itself. For me personally, I feel like it does feel a little bit overcomplicated, like Russell says, and I personally think it does make sense for it to have been cut because I don't think we really needed an explanation as to where the Doctor gets a whistle from. I think he could just have a whistle. I don't think we needed an overcomplicated, timey-wimey explanation for how the Doctor got a whistle to summon the TARDIS when we could have just had him have a whistle. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. And that's all the deleted scenes we got shown from Doctor Who Season 1 and The Giggle. Like I said, we did get a few more announcements during Doctor Who Day on Saturday, such as a War Games colorization that should be coming on the 23rd of December, as well as some posters for Joy to the World and a few other announcements. Like I said earlier in this video, I might be doing a video on that this weekend, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. But one thing we didn't get during Doctor Who Day that we thought we might be getting was a trailer for the upcoming Christmas special, Joy to the World. But we did recently get a preview for that episode during Children in Need, which I recently did a breakdown of, and if you want to watch that, I'll make sure to have that on screen here. Thanks for watching.